Hi again. Welcome to the studio. Today I pulled out some older pieces, uh, big works, both unfinished. This is just the very, very beginning layers. Um, and also older works that I really wanted to rework. And I jumped right in. It was terrifying. I'm really rusty. But I got a couple of layers done and then I realized I really do need to warm up more and get some more practice on smaller scales. So I'm going to work on my series of 100 works on paper and oh that one's stinky. I just tried out some acrylic spray paint. Not inside but still they're stinky. Um, yeah so they're nine by nine inches and I'm going to work through my rustiness and falling back into a flow into a style. I want to make several works that have a similar feel, similar palette, so that they can kind of form like mini series within the 100 works. There's no way 100 works are going to, um, you know, fit together in one series and I wouldn't want them to. The whole point of that series, the giant series or the giant project of 100 works on paper is to work through more ideas, palettes, mediums, experiment in a really sort of low stakes kind of way. If I ruin this, it's a nine by nine piece of paper. Okay, I hope you enjoy coming along with me today. First, I'm gonna shuffle through all these to pick what to start on. So I've narrowed it down to just work on a few at a time, um, mostly because that's the space I have. Also, I have like backup sets that I can pull in, the ones that I feel like are working well together um, that have some sort of mirroring so I can kind of work almost as if it's a diptych which is like a painting with two pieces. One other thing I've done is I've opened my sketchbook and to one of these pages that has real rough grid on it just so that I can use me use medium up like whatever I'm working on I can just come over here and get some mini abstracts going so that's sitting on my window ledge right next to me and so far I've only worked in water media on these so I can really employ anything I want. I have watercolor crayons here and I have watercolor pencil crayons, but I'm also interested in maybe bringing in some actual pencil crayons, So, but they're wax, more waxy, so I don't know if that'll work right away. I'm talking too much, let's get going. So I'm gonna lay in a sketch just to direct this, this painting a little more, like it's had a lot of free flow, um, but I really want it to turn into a landscape and in particular, I have a reference from a trail run that caught my eye today. It's very fall colors, very rocky. And so I'm thinking maybe if I just sketch in a little bit of guidance here, it'll help, you know, kind of focus this, this painting. I chose this one out of all the ones that are, you know, half worked because I really like these colors. So I want to pull them out more. Uh, I have a, uh, I have Pinterest up on my computer next to me and I have several boards. They're private boards. Um, if you're interested, I could always share them, but they are boards like wh where I've collected a bunch of photos that match a certain palette. So today I am going off of a palette collection that I've made is called Earthy Fall Palette and I'm going to work within that color range today. So we've got kind of dirty olive greens and some oranges and grays and things like that. So let's see, maybe I need some get more of acrylic paint in here, but scribbling is always a good way to go. If you need the texture, you know, nothing beats a good old scribble. I have some acrylic and water on this paintbrush. So it's kind of, I was painting in white, so it's kind of going to make this a bit milky, which is fine. I had titanium white, like a high flow of titanium white on here. And you know what I should do is I should keep on hand a paper towel anytime I do something like that and cover up a color that I really love. I don't want to color that color, cover that color right now. So if you lay down 
water and then you'd color back over with these watercolor, their Faber-Castell Aquarelle stick. And if you draw, use them on top of water, I mean, that's too much moisture, but just a little bit and you get some pretty bold marks. This is a bit much in here. I think I want to play with some Posca pens. That is barely showing up. So I'm going to switch to a green one that I have over here. Where are you, green Posca? All right, I've dug out some colors I think that will help. I don't know about purple, but I'm going to put it there because I had an impulse, and you have to listen to your impulses. These are Blick Matte Acrylics. They won't be shiny, but drawing material goes very really well on top of them. Um, some Just some muted greens and oranges, and this one's like a really nice... That's literally gold. That's not the paint color I thought I was grabbing. Stay calm, everybody. I found more. So I pulled out some earthy colors, some pastels. Um, even though it's a fall palette, I really am going on the muted side of things because I have done intense color for a long time and my eyes need a break. I hang all my work in my apartment to keep it safe rather than just stacking it all the time. I hang as much as I can around the house and man oh man, it is, it is just chaos. Oh, these are new. So to activate, oh, okay. So to activate a new Posca pen, you have to like press down on it. And um, you should have like a scrap piece of paper to do that on, obviously not the actual drawing, but I really am not invested in this yet. <laughs> so it is okay that that just happened, but I would not recommend it. That's a great time to pull over the sketchbook and then you know make sure you're get your pen to not leak it's got good flow and then bring it over to the actual painting let's see what i can do by just you moving this around with a brush it is very fluid i'm kind of sad a lot came out i don't want to waste these but oh my gosh that is the worst Hint, like hindrance that I've ever had to deal with is this fear of using my materials and it's like that's what art is it's used materials but you spend on enough time you know really longing for certain art supplies and not being able to buy them I'm talking about like in my undergrad in my 20s and such and that it's like ingrained in me now oh don't don't use that up oh come on that's the worst you need to get really comfortable using your supplies um, usually my students do not put enough, whoop, I covered that orange again, don't do that. <laughs> okay, oops. A lot of my students don't put enough paint on their palette and they're constantly dabbing out more and more paint from their tubes onto their palette and it like breaks the flow of them working and I just try to ask them to please embrace it and put more on the, put more on the palette and then we can always spray water on it and other things to try to keep it moist. Um, saran wrap works well if you're going to go have dinner and come back if you put saran wrap over your acrylic they won't completely dry out and become completely unusable I like this right now I don't know where this is going but there's like some mountain feel and some wind and I kind of want to tie the two together color wise so I'm gonna keep some orange showing through and just get a bit of the green on here. There's still more on this page. I'm gonna block out a bit of this purple. I said I was keeping orange and then immediately covered it. Hmm, what can you do? And also have a space, like have something that you don't care about so you're not worrying about that. Um, they have, there's some nice sort of table covers. They're just mats that you can put down and then you can be as messy as you want to be on that mat without worrying about like creating this crazy texture because this isn't helpful um, to have all the time when you're trying to draw and there's this texture underneath. I always have to have a 
you know, a pad of paper down or something if I'm going to do that. It's not coming off a lot. Let's try big. Go big. Yeah, that's working better. Here's a red orange and another orange. Yeah, I'm just going to leave. Oh, oh, that's nice. Something I, you know, you just, you would not have, I couldn't have planned this, but it's kind of scratching through the paint at the same time as it's laying on a tiny bit. I couldn't have predicted that that was what was going to happen. Uh, it's really juicy though. It's nice. Creating something interesting. So very cool that you just happen upon these mistakes you wouldn't know otherwise. And now I know that can happen. I'm, I can go in and see. This one is not doing the same thing, probably because it's dry. Er, dry er. So I'm doing these as if they're almost like pops of color or weeds or sort of fall. A smattering of orange, dead, gorgeous foliage of some kind. I don't have to know, and that is the beauty. This is smaller than the green, the green one, and so a little less is coming out. It makes for a nice drawing implement. Trying to get the nooks and crannies of the rock. It kind of almost looks like it's snow in there, but it, I don't think it is. I think it's rock. I don't generally like to go trail running in snow. <laughs> generally stay away from that. All right, I got some acrylic brushes, designated acrylic brushes. Do not mix acrylic brushes with your watercolor. You, once you use acrylic with them, you're not gonna be able to, um, it'll kind of ruin them for watercolor. Oh, and this is like a rubber sort of stylus there. I can scratch into things. This is semi unusual to just dip into the container itself. We don't really want to dry it out. Maybe I should grab a palette. Who would who would think that would be useful right now? But it would. And I'm going to get some heavy bodied light, which will nicely turn things to pastels, which I kind of the feel I'm going for. Very soft fall. Wow, interesting. So when you add, I remember this. Gosh, it's been a while. When you add white to this, it really turns into this rusty, rusted orange, which is almost what I want perfectly. I love it. I love it. And I didn't even mean to do that. I thought I was getting in some browns, but really it's this rust color. So I'm trying to direct the eye up here, not in one continuous line, but with repetitious marks in this in a similar color. And hopefully that leads the eye up there like I want it to. And then down here. I want some rock 
more rock formations. You can see through this, it's a very transparent color. Quinacridone nickel azo gold. Azo? Azo. And so it's quite it's quite transparent. This is their little transparency test thingies so that you know what to expect. It's going to be a lot less transparent once you add titanium white. I know, bold. <laughs> wow. It just feels so good to be touching materials and paints again after such a long hiatus. Uh, for those who don't know me, I was a school librarian for several years and a third grade English teacher. And when I became the third grade English teacher, I had zero energy, zero time. I worked 60 to 80 hours a week and was just so burnt out. I worked at a public charter school with very high expectations and I loved it. I just didn't have two lives worth of time to uh, manage that and what makes me a uh, whole, which is being a creator. So I had to, it was a very hard decision, but I had to leave that job uh, recently and devote myself full time to art. I teach a few classes at a university as adjunct and I am spending all the rest of my time working on my art business. So you can imagine how good it feels to have time to sit for more extended periods and really get into the flow of creating. It's just making me and my soul so happy. Happy down to the tips of my toes. So I'm using that rubber and I use this in my oil painting as well, this little rubber tool and it just creates some beautiful textures. I'm sorry if you can hear hollering. School just got let out and children are hollering as they do, you know. There's no way to hide the marks when you're using this. It's like making some really bold marks saying, hey, an artist made this. These were my hand motions. This is, you know, the, f the fluidity or the energy I had when making it, um, which is part of the magic of abstraction. That's one reason I've kind of strayed from realism is because this allows this allows like a record of what I was doing and you can clearly see, you know, the way I was making marks, where I was careful, where I was rushed, where I worked in big chunks and where I tidied, like tightened up a little. Let's see. Ah, look at that. I tested on, I took my own advice and tested on the side. So I'm going to sketch a little with this, uh, looks like a Payne's Gray kind of slight gray. The other color I was using was beige. A lot of these rocks have cracks in them and I'm not, I'm really not, oh, look at me covering that orange. That orange just wanted to be defaced. Goodbye orange. But I'm really not looking at like specific things in my reference photo. I'm just kind of glancing at it and getting a getting a feel and then making it up um, just to keep it fresh and may make sure I'm working with what's right in front of me, what will make a good painting, not necessarily what is in the reference photo. It's not how I use reference photos. Um, when I'm trying to make a really realistic component like a bird or 
a branch or something specific like that, then yeah, then I'll focus on the references. How to recreate this realistically or or whatever. But right now I'm just using it as inspiration really and more like a way to keep myself on track at least a little so I don't go in every direction I'm like no you're doing a landscape it's rocky it's fall stick with that because you I mean you don't have to be that decisive when you start a painting in fact I don't I don't really do that but at the point where, where I'm at right now look at how this let me finish that sentence. At the point that I'm at right now, I've already worked on this a bunch and now I'm trying to pull it together into something. So that's why I'm, you know, I need something to hold me together and keep me directed. But look at how this Posca pen can get some um, pretty bold lines and then pretty fine lines, depending on your pressure. I love it. This is new to me. This is a new supply. Sometimes you just need to liven up your life a little bit with um, some new supplies if you're feeling like stuck or stagnant. And so Posca pens or paint pens in general are one of the new things I'm adding. I have worked with paint pens before, but I literally had one, maybe two colors, and I had only pulled them out a handful of times. In a course I'm currently teaching in college right now, we're working with charcoal and we use our hands a lot to smear. So even what you're doing in other areas of your life can influence what you're doing right now on your page. So the fact that I've been working with charcoal is changing probably the way that I'm drawing and blending and such right now. So these are the Posca paint pens, really, really high quality. That's what you should go for. But I also wanted to experiment. So I got, these were really affordable, Jane Davenport musical markers, because look at all the neutrals in there. Like you just, there's endless neutrals here and oranges and burnt colors. That's pink, that's not happening today. I don't know, peach. And so, nope. Just digging through here to see what might work. Some really pale ones. Ooh, that's nice. So it's kind of hard for me to see because the caps don't have the same color as what's below. Always, always mix up the paint and drop it on something else. There we go. It wasn't flowing very much, so I overdid it and smushed that down aggressively. You have to be really gentle with these. Clearly, that is not the way to do it, but it's okay. I'm intentionally making messes. I love that about my current approach or style is that it's just about making messes and then reining them in. Oh, this is nice and delicate, but Come on, there we go. Oh, I love it, I love it, okay. It's standing out nicely, really complements this quinacridone color here. Gold, what did I say it was? Yeah, gold. Let's see if we can, I've kind of abandoned this for a little while. Let's see if we can give it some attention as well. This is on fire and look at how transparent it is. Oh.
<laughs> so this paint bin right now is just really scratching the other paint off instead of applying anything, which is cool. It's fine by me. It's not laying down on this. This is kind of glossy paint. It's not really doing what I want it to on there and that's okay. Brush, I need you brush. I don't have a reference for this. I am completely making this up, which is a struggle, but I'll end up with something just different than the other one and that's that's good need some variety oh look at that texture coming out huh it's nice texture from previous layers I am really good at making things too busy and so that's kind of a challenge I give myself near the end of a painting is to calm it down and take away the like nauseating chaos of it. <laughs> it's an aesthetic, it is, um, but I get tired of it sometimes and just want to be more minimalist. It's just not in my nature right now. but. Maybe sometime in some future works. It needs gray, like deep grays. I'm gonna go find a gray. I've got a Payne's gray here. It's going to be very blue, but across the color wheel from blue is orange, and this is kind of leaning orange, so. I'm thinking that that will tone it down and make it more brown instead of blue, which is what I'm into right now. That'll be great for this piece. I don't really wanna add blue, like a regular readable blue. See how that turns blue? So I don't want that. I'm gonna mix in the Azo Gold and we've got like a green here. I'm not even sure I like, well, yeah, I do want olives, that's good actually. Um, but I'm going to still have to mix a gray with something else. Probably get some black in there. It's always fun to try to mix neutrals and st such without having a neutral. Like, don't reach for brown. Instead, mix colors until you get different browns and it'll add like a sophistication to your, your work rather than using things right out of the tube. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Using your colors straight out of the tube just like this uh, it really is one of the f easiest things to fix for like amateur or beginner artists I don't like the word amateur um, beginner artists because as soon as you start mixing it uh, makes it look more professional so I say don't mix, use right out of the tube, and then I, this is exactly what I was doing. But these are like really kind of odd, unique colors, and so you can break the rules, I'm telling you, depending on what me, what uh, sort of mediums you're working with, what paint, what colors. This is so chaotic. I need you all to calm down. White is a really lazy solution to making things calm, but I'm going to do it anyway. I just need, I need some peace and quiet on this page. So, a lot of green happening. I think that this olivey, while I have it, it's going to look great here. So, it's, see, this is another reason I work side by side because I can look at that and go, yep, you know, I have green on here. It, it does work together, and then I don't have to experiment with this. I know already that that is going to be something that works out on this page. 
So this is a very vibrant green. It's not realistic. I'm trying to tone it down into the neutral fall palette that I have chosen that is shining at me from my monitor. I'm not going to get rid of it all. It's going to show through. When I'm reaching over like this, I'm just grabbing water. I've got a water dish over there. Because these are getting sticky already. We live in a very dry climate in Texas, so you have to kind of work with your materials just a little differently when you are in lacking such humidity as we are. I know I'm making a lot of teeny marks right now, but I'm thinking if I repeat these marks enough across the painting that that could unify it a little. I'm trying to unify it right now because it's chaos. So I'm making a lot of the same marks, but I'm going to move them down through the painting and maybe that will tie things together a bit. Maybe it won't, but it is the method I've done before, so I'm feeling confident. This brush is very soft, it's not very textured. There's no right or wrong brush, it's just they're different. So. If I had a more textured or stiff brush, I could see a lot more bristles in what I was doing instead of having to really smoosh and smear this on. Okay, I'm feeling fall now with the dirty sort of olivey green and the rust together, but I still like this teal showing through. Um, that's something, or the mint kind of teal, turquoise, pale turquoise. I can't get rid of that. Uh, it's going to be throughout a bunch of them. It's like I chose not really in, not really intentionally, but by default after making a bunch of these paintings, I noticed that that color uh, was throughout. And so I'm kind of leaving it um, hints throughout a lot of the pieces, kind of something to tie the greater collection together. I need a uh, dark gray now. I can't put it off any longer. I've got to go find a black acrylic. Let me just tell you a few more things that I'm obsessed with uh, because you got to share something good when you when you find something good. Uh, the cadmium free, it doesn't have to be cadmium free. Um, if you're trying to be non-toxic, that's a good idea. The red light is just such an exciting color to me. It's practically orange. And I don't mind if that turns up in every painting that I make from now till the end of time. Cars. Uh, Titan Green Pale, I found this today. This was one more purchase that I made today out of the need to freshen up a bit. And I thought, hey, it's saving me one step. It's a pre-mixed pale green. And I can use that to tie my works together too if I'm having trouble. Look at all these supplies. I need a bigger space. So this is my black. I found it. It's small because I use it sparingly. I am so sorry for the sound of that car. That dude is clearly excited about how loud his car is. Yay. It's breaking my flow, dude. <laughs> um, let's try some different shapes. Different brushes. I'm going to go for this little one. It's a flat, but it is a little one. Nee, 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 nee. And this is almost like drawing. This uh, black is so, it's nice and fluid, so you can really, you can draw with your brush really easily. If you're looking for like nice, tiny, thin lines, please, oh no, I just got paint on my computer. I'm gonna have to clean that off go for the fluid golden acrylic it is it's golden let me just clean off my computer monitor because i just got paint all over it on continue
Hubs is home. And our pup is clearly happy to see him. <laughs> Adding this Payne's Gray to the black really makes a nice shade here. This is a bit stark, it's creating too much contrast. So I have to find a way to ease it, ease it back. I did want dark in here, but it's not really... Oh, this is kind of mucking it up a bit. I just want it to be less contrasty, less stark, but I do want some deep values in the final thing. So this is just like scratching it off. It's not entirely, it's not laying down anything right now. It's just, it's like a scratching tool, but um, it's, it's working, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. You tell me. I like scribbling. That part's working out for me. Um, come back to me, beige. So I'm just laying down a bit of the acrylic paint from the Posca pen and then just smearing it in. These are both acrylic. They should work well together. And if not, well, we'll find out. Hmm. So another thing I tell my students that I will, you'll see me doing, or hopefully you'll see me doing, sometimes I just, I do this when I'm, you know, leaving the camera to go reach for a new material, but you have to stand back every now and then. Hold your work, if it's this size, hold it at arm's length at least to get some perspective on it. Even better if you can step back several yards, meters, and view it from um, a distance. I'm going to take a mini break, walk away, and come back and see what's standing out just to get some perspective and some, um, you know, fresh eyes on it. I know I'm going to still bring black over here. Sometimes I'll literally leave myself a note on a sticky note or something like that. Like you were halfway through adding black, you need to do it over on this side. Just so that I don't come back completely forget where I was. Um, I have to try to maintain that flow a little bit. So yeah, there's a balance, a delicate dance between keeping the flow and then also getting some perspective so that you can approach it with fresh eyes. I am losing light and hours in the day, so I'm going to wrap up today's um, little mixed media session pretty quickly. And I will, I can always continue these, um, these current paintings on another video. But I'm just gonna use up what's on my palette. I, I do that a lot um, before I give up for the day. I try to use what's on the palette. If I can't put it on here, I don't wanna wreck these drawings or paintings just because I need to use up the paint. That would be silly. So you can pull, that's when you can pull out the sketchbook and you can lay in your extra paint there. My resource does not have this bright orange color, but I think that it will help make the greens pop and give them a lot of purpose. Because right now they're kind of muddy and just not doing a lot, but they're beautiful, so. Let's see, this is this uh, is heavy body, this orange color. Uh, the cadmium light is heavy body, so that means it's like super thick and not it's not coming off the palette very well. It's kind of dried out. And acrylics will dry out over time, so do oils. In your in your tubes, they get a little like stickier, but you can still use them. That might be when you bring in like artist mediums, like I mean artist mediums, like acrylic mediums to change the viscosity of your paint. Gotta do something with this bright orange up here do something okay remember how I told myself that I was going to 
add more darks to the other side. I have not forgotten. I almost did, but I have not forgotten. I'm having trouble with this paper lifting up and it's kind of affecting the way I'm making marks. So might suggest taping down your paper if you're going to work like this. I'm getting quieter with less to say. It is so busy still. <laughs> I have to make some decisions. I love some marks, but regardless of whether or not I love some marks, um, I might have to paint over them in order to create more unity. So I have to make some choices about what colors am I gonna let dominate because right now the green is fighting the orange. And now I've got black to contend with, like these dark colors. So I'm going to actually reverse some of what I did there. I'm not going to go for the, the deep, dark parts like I initially thought I was going to. I'm going to undo that now. And you'll see in a while I completely redo the deep darks. It's just a back and forth. You never know how it's going to turn out. And this can be my deep colors, just this dark green. Also, when you're trying to like make something less busy, a small brush probably isn't the way to go, <laughs> which is what I have right now. Um, it might serve you better to make bigger, broader marks. Let me see if I can get myself to use a wider brush here. That one's not even much wider. Mm, let's go for the one inch brush. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. I can just lay a very light, <laughs> as I'm holding down the paper with this paintbrush, I'm making marks that I'm not even aware of. Yay. What's happening though, right now, is some nice, transparent almost like glazes which will I didn't think to do this but it will calm things down unify it I shouldn't be using water to make glazes though I should really be using a medium so I'm going to put some of this on my palette it's acrylic glazing liquid and the reason for this to use this instead of water is so that oh man look at the mess I'm making I just roll right in there uh, is because you don't want your acrylic to crack and just mixing water with it doesn't have binder to bind it to the the page so that is problematic i want to do this with i want to make my clear glazes either with like a light bodied paint these uh, fluids are often transparent um, a bit more transparent and medium so look we mix that in it looks white when it's on the palette but it it ends up being clear and then let's do some glazes together yes this is how we can maybe tie it together i'm sad i went over some of the orange there so i'm going to make sure to not do that everywhere It's just subtly tinting things and then maybe make a glaze out of the green as well. Can I do that? I don't know what it'll look like. So that's not as transparent and that's okay. There, it's more transparent here. So the whole thing just kind of transformed right in front of me. I'm going to see if I can make a blue glaze with the Payne's gray. And because it's there's so much orange here, if I lay that over, it's going to kind of turn into a brown and neutral. It won't look blue. Where else needs it? I'm 
Still having trouble up here. Mm -hmm. It's okay if I push it too far this way. I can always go back and add highlights. I haven't touched the sky at all, and I feel like that needs to change. I'm not sure if it should be this pale green or if I should be bringing in white. Like, skies aren't green-gray, but maybe today they are. I'll let a little bit of that blue show through, though. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I think it, this is too muddy. What do you think? I don't know. It could be like a foggy... <laughs> well, the sky in Texas, in West Texas, does do this. It can, it's called a dust storm. And uh, yeah, so the sky could literally be brown. Um, I prefer if this looked like it was fog and not a dust storm, but this is interesting. I, I really like the little tiny bits of bright orange and turquoise showing through the otherwise really neutral painting. Oh, I'm liking this a lot. So I'm going to mix that green. First, let me clean my brush off because I'm doing the sky and I don't want to muck it up even more than it already is. Got white here. And I've got this light green. And I'm gonna do that. That's better. Um, I'm gonna, one thing I do a lot for like tree lines and things like that, trees, is I just, I take the sky color and I go back in and over. It's like I figured this out in high school or something and I've done it ever since. I love it, this technique of painting the sky after the actual tree and allowing your your textures of the tree to be kind of chiseled out after the fact because the details of trees and such is just can be it can be hard to achieve so I think I need more liquid I was using the heavy body uh, white, but I think I need to bring in the fluid titanium. It's a lot clearer. I'm standing up now and standing over this so that I can get a little distance from it while I'm finishing it up. I gotta say, I am really enjoying this. It's just not something I was expecting I could create today. That makes me happy. I'm gonna try to, I don't know if I like this detail here. I'm gonna try to blur it out. That's better. I don't, I don't actually want chiseled detailed trees on the back here that we wanna make it kind of fade out a bit like we want to create some depth like it's actually in the distance so I can't bring that detail into that tree unless the foreground's even more detailed which I mean it is chaotic but I, chaos doesn't necessarily mean detail <laughs> okay I don't think I need to bring more light into here I think maybe this is a bit too strong I lost some of my highlights so I'm going to bring them back in. I don't mind if they don't look like rocks and they look more like paint paintbrush strokes. It's okay to me for me. I think I'm not touching that. I did that at the very beginning and I kind of love it. There we go. See, I'm dispersing the the lighter values just a little bit just so that it wasn't too this path wasn't too dominating it looks like a river it doesn't look like a trail at all which is totally fine the inspiration is the same the intention is the same so I'm okay if it 
doesn't end up being like physically the object, the subject that I started making, right? It's okay if I start painting a river and it ends up looking like a trail, you know, intentions, like the, uh, the subject matter can change as you go. And that's part of the magic. Shall I show you how I make my signature? Basically, I have I have to use like a different a high different value. So I've got some lights down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a thicker dark bit over this, and then I will take the I have another rubber tool that's even smaller than this. I'm going to go look for it. If I can't find it, I can use the the point on this. It's just a little it's like a little too squishy, floppy. But I'm going to um, just basically scratch my signature in as opposed to say use a tiny tiny brush and deal with that fiddliness i'm going to take the thicker paint it needs to be thicker because i'm going to carve through it um, and i don't want to ruin the, the painting i'll have to add maybe more dark up here later to kind of balance this but um, basically i'm just going to lay the dark on top of the light and then i can go in And I, you can see me, I'm like wiping the, I'm gathering a bit of the paint, wiping it on my desk. That one will scrape. If you don't have a, a really different value contrast, like if I didn't have that light back here, like right here, it's not as light, you, you lose the, uh, the legibility but it's just an interesting way to sign your pieces um, through is it scrafito scraping through the paint often for small works I just say I just do my initials JD but um, yeah I think this is distracting <laughs> so I just wanted to show you. And now it's getting sticky at my notebook, but, oh, that worked. Dee, 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 dee. So a much, it's a little bit bigger, but it's much simpler, it's uh, JD. I still don't love it, guys, I still don't love it. I think I'm gonna just stick with that. It's not perfect, but it's there, if anyone was really looking. Did I wreck the painting by adding my signature? I mean, you gotta be careful. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I just might need a teensy tiny bit more dark value over here. Counterbalance that. This one is super textured. It's I have I went through a phase where everything was like super smooth. Like every mark had to be sort of defined and I didn't see brush strokes and that was a while ago. All right, I said I would stop working on this and move to another one. Thanks for joining me while I worked on this little mixed media on paper work. It really helped me to talk to you as I did it. It just made me very aware of what and why I was doing things. And sometimes that's really healthy to not just lose yourself in it and make all the make all the marks, but really think like, why am I aggravated by this right now? Or what do I think I need to do right now to get myself out of the situation? <laughs> Basically, art is just making problems for yourself and then solving them. And so, yeah, it was it was very helpful. I will be more aware when I'm working on other pieces after this that, you know, what techniques I used to sort of calm it down, um, continuous mark making, uh, kind of blending things, using a bigger brush, doing some glazes. I will keep those in my mind next time I have to quiet down a busy scene. This could still use a lot of quieting down, but sometimes the piece is just asking for its own thing. And today it's saying, 
let me be. So thanks for coming along with me and I hope you enjoyed getting a little behind the scenes uh, into my process. And please like and subscribe so that I can keep bringing you more art videos. Till next time.